All right, I want to go through a quick example uh, that covers the distribution of the sample proportion. So that is chapter 8, section 2 in your book. Uh, according to a study conducted by a statistical organization, the proportion of Americans who are satisfied with the way things are going in their lives is 0.88. Suppose that a random sample of 100 Americans is obtained, complete parts A through C. So the first thing, it's asking us to describe the sampling distribution of P hat. Uh, and so we've got our choices of A through D. So first off, I want to discuss P hat really quickly. So P hat is just your sample proportion. And so the P with the little guy, so that's P hat. And P hat is just X over N. X is the number of individuals for the th of the thing you're, you care about. So the number of things you care about over the total sample size. Uh, in being the total sample size. So that's what our p hat is. So for the sampling distribution, it's telling us that we can approximate it uh, with the normal distribution if n times p times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. Well, we are talking about p hat here, it's talking about p here. p is the proportion of the population, so of everything. So this 0.88 is actually our P. So 0 0.88 is our P. And our sample size of 100, so N is 100. And so we need to figure out if we can approximate this with the normal distribution. And then we're going to be doing n times p times 1 minus p. And we need that to be greater than or equal to 10. So if we use our calculator right quick. So n is 100 times our p is 0.88. And we can all go ahead and type out the 1 minus 0.88. But if you wanted to be a little quicker with it, you could just put in the 0.12. So we're getting 10.56. So indeed, that's greater than or equal to 10. So that will let us know that we can indeed use our uh, the normal distribution to approximate. So that has us narrowing down our choices between A and C. Uh, because this is saying it's uniform uh, for B and D, saying that it cannot be approximated by the normal distribution. So we know for sure that it's either going to be A or C, so we don't have to worry about uh, B or D. All right, so now we have to figure out the uh, mu sub p hat as well as the standard error or the standard deviation, uh, so sigma sub p hat. So the good part is that we don't actually have to do any calculations for this mu sub p hat. So mu sub p hat is the same thing as p, so that's going to be 0 0.88. So that's in both of these, but we do need to calculate the standard deviation. If we scroll back down to the purple box, uh, here our standard deviation is going to be the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. So our p is 0.88 and then 1 minus p, so 1 minus 0.88 over our sample size of 100. And I'm going to plug that in the calculator right quick. So we're going to do the square root 0.88, and I'm going to shorthand it this time, times 0.12, and then divided by 100. And we're going to get 0 0.03249 and so on, uh, 96 and so on. And if we look at our options, uh, we're going to go with 0 0.032. So our correct answer for this is going to be C. And so now we know our mean and standard deviation. So that means the p hat and the uh, sigma sub p hat. All right, let's look at part B. So using the distribution from part A, what is the probability that at least 80 Americans in the sample are satisfied with their lives? 
Well, I'm going to draw out the uh, a not very pretty <laughs> normal curve. And so I can kind of show you what's going on. So in the very center here, this uh, is going to be our P. So that's 0 0.88. Uh, that is the mean. Uh, and so we are wanting to find the probability that at least 80 Americans in the sample are satisfied with their lives. Well, 80 and 0.88, well, these don't really go together. So the 80 is going to be used for us to find a P hat. So for B, P hat is going to be 80 over, and then N is our sample size, which is 100. So that's just going to be 0.8. So now I want to put this 0.8 on our normal curve, so it's going to be to the left. I will put over here somewhere, so 0.8. And it's saying that we want to find the probability that at least 80 Americans in the sample are satisfied. So this is saying uh, that p hat is going to be greater than or equal to 0.8. So we're looking for the area to the right of 0.8. So to do this, we're going to use our normal CDF. And so that's what within our calculator. And this is where we're going to put in a, a lower bound, an upper bound, a mean, and a standard deviation. So a lower bound, an upper bound, a mean, and a standard deviation. All right. So to do that, our lower bound is going to be 0.8. Our upper bound, though, we don't have a top number. So we're just going to put in a big number. So let's follow through along in our calculator. So the normal CDF, I'm going to go to second and then go to distribution. Here's our normal CDF. And again, I've got 0.8 for our lower bound. We use commas to separate everything. I'm just going to pick a big number. Uh, so I typically do four nines. And our mean is going to be that 0.88. And our standard deviation was that 0 0.032. And we're getting 0.99. 379, it's time to go to four decimal places. So it's going to be 0 0.9938. So for part B, our answer is going to be 0 0.9938. And let's look at part C right quick. So for part C, it's a similar idea, except that it's asking us, what's the probability that 79 or fewer Americans in the sample are satisfied with their lives? So we're starting off with that same, same normal curve, so that's the same, same picture, where we have 0.88 in the middle. So 79 or fewer, and then I'm already converting that over to the p hat. So p hat is going to be 79 over 100, which is 0.79. So if we have 0.79 somewhere over there, and then we want 79 or fewer, so 0.79 or fewer. So having p hat be less than or equal to 0.79, we're looking for the area to the left. And same idea. Uh, with using our calculator, and we're going to go through and do second distribution. We're going to go to either you can hit number two or scroll down. Our lower bound, well, this time we don't have a lower bound. Um, we don't have a the smallest value. So I'm going to pick a big negative number. So I'm just going to do negative 9999 up to 0.79. So that's our upper bound. Oh, get the right numbers in there 0.79. And we have a mean of 0.88 and a standard deviation of 0 0.032. And that's going to give us 0 
two, four, five, seven, and so on, and to four decimal places, that'll be 0 0.0025.